So welcome everyone. My name is Taurus the Legend. Thank you so much for joining us on our episode six of our SAP Garage series for 2023. Today's session, we're going to be covering the mission synchronized account data between SAP s hana and third-party CRM. And our guest speaker today is uh, my colleague Sharik Anwar. He's an integra enterprise integration consultant at uh, Rojo Consultancy. He'll be covering this um, mission. Um, before you can also find this mission, we'll put the link in the um, in the chat as we're moving forward, so that you can um, refer back to this link uh, in the Discovery Center. Um, also, um, I wanted to just quickly remind you guys of some of the other um, communities that we have on ongoing besides the Garage series. We've got the Screen Personas um, Practitioners Forum. We have the SAP Fury Practitioners Forum the SAP Business Technology uh, Practitioners Forum, and the, the most recent one, the SAP Build uh, Practitioners Forum. So if you wanna join any one of those, please do uh, reach out uh, to us. We've also got several webinars that are being planned. Uh, so we're looking at putting together a whole new SAP Datasphere series. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned for some dates. Um, also, there we're planning on several on-site uh, BTP um, events as well at a at a city hopefully near you. We'll uh, we'll get um, we'll get that information to you as as quickly as possible. I also want to take this opportunity to apologize to all of you uh, with all of the emails that uh, that I've been sending out. Uh, for some reason, we've been having a lot of technical difficulties with uh, with Zoom and invalid meeting IDs. Um, so unfortunately, uh, we had to cancel the series that we sent out last time and send out a new series. And and, and I, I apologize for any of the inconvenience of the uh, you know many emails that uh, was sent to you guys. Hopefully, this won't happen uh, anymore in the future, and we've hopefully sorted this out. Without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to uh, Sharik to take over. Let me stop my share and Sharik, you can take over from there. Sure, thanks Taurus. I'll be sharing my screen. Let me know when it is visible. Okay, not yet. Yep, I can see your screen. Awesome. Okay. So I believe my PPT is visible now? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. So let me introduce myself. Hi, good day everyone. And thanks for joining us. Uh, I am Shari Kanwar living in Netherlands and working at Roku Consultancy as Enterprise Integration Consultant. Today I will be taking you through the SAP mission scenario related to synchronized account data. Uh, before we jump into the mission, let me tell you more about Rojo itself. Uh, we are based in Netherlands, Spain, and India, and are operating globally. Rojo is quite unique in what it does. We are a company that focuses purely on enterprise integration and very much on SAP integration. Our goal is to become the global partner of choice when it comes to application integration with SAP and non-SAP systems. And that's exactly what our journey has been. Stay focused on our goal, helping clients with their integration challenges and enriching the partner platforms we work with. We collaborate with different partners and SAP being the first and most important one as well, as you will see in the next slides. Let's have a look at our portfolio. Um, it consists three main areas covering the full life cycle of an integration, where we have consultancy and innovation, we build integration for various clients across the globe. We create our own software to be deployed on our partner platforms. And last but not the least, manage services, where we manage the integration we have been building for our customers, as well as the softwares we have been creating, which are being used worldwide. They are being supported by our managed services team. On this slide, you see the accelerator. Let me move this if I can. Perfect. 
So on this slide, you see accelerators, um, uh, which is which are available in SAP Cloud Integration, already available, and few of them are in the roadmap of 2023. In SAP world, accelerators are known as adapters or connectors. And these adapters help us integrate with application from SAP Cloud Integration. They hide the complexity, reduce implementation time and effort, and make integration more maintainable. These adapters are running natively in SAP CI, meaning they are available within cloud integration itself. You don't have to switch to different application, different platform to use them. These adapters are developed based on market demands and requests from various customers. If I name few, uh, you see here, the recent ones are added like an example, Coupa, Azure Data Lake, uh, Azure Blob. Uh, we are uh, working to launch Oracle NetSuite in the coming uh, months. And the one on the right side you see here is Salesforce as CRM applications used worldwide. And this is the adapter we are using in our current SAP scenario as well. I go further. Yeah, so let's dive into SAP mission scenario where we are today. We are talking about synchronized account data between SAP S4 HANA and third party CRM, in this case, Salesforce. And what is the need of this scenario itself? What is the need of this synchronization? So let's take a step back. Organization nowadays have multiple system in their landscape. They use different systems for different business needs. But at the same time, they want all these systems to talk to each other, work seamlessly for their business processes to run. And when we do that, that means we have to identify common scenario, those common business scenario, which will help businesses doing that daily business run. And one of the common, common scenario is master data synchronization. And hence the need of this particular mission scenario, synchronize account data. Okay, now we have identified that we need to synchronize this integration, which is account data, but how will we realize it? And that's when the automation comes into the picture and SAP BTP gives us the features like SAP integration suite in which you have SAP cloud integration, which can do a lot of automation for us. What we have done here within to create this automation, we have created an integration flow within SAP cloud integration, which does the heavy lifting for us. Once we create this iFlow, that can be configured by any customer like you, like anybody else. They can configure it and use it. And that's the automation part. And that's what C cloud integration does best. If I move to the right side of the slide, here you see that technical architecture diagram of the integration flow we are talking about. So on the left, you see S4 HANA. This is on-premise. On the right side, you see CRM system, Salesforce, and in the middle is SAP Cloud Integration. And this is where the magic happens. So the diagram is such a way that on a periodic basis, at a regular interval, the Cloud Integration connects with S4 HANA, queries the business partner data from S4 HANA. Once it gets the data, it manipulates the data based on the need of Salesforce, which creates account. So in cloud integration, we manipulate the data we receive from S4 HANA and then publish using the Salesforce adapt to Salesforce. And then account data are created here. So this is the architecture diagram of the integration flow. Let me walk you through the mission scenario from the mission itself. And this is the link uh, Toros shared with us in the chat. Um, here you see the overview of the whole integration scenario. Uh, I briefly already discussed about it. So you, you see the whole use case, get the background of it. What is the current challenge, the problem, 
what are the destination where we, we want to we want to go by a, realizing this mission scenario and this provides us a step by step guide and to do that we go to the project board in the project board it gives you um, it guides you through the whole process of realizing this mission scenario in a project way so there is a discovery phase where you discover what are the components different uh, applications you are dealing with you have an understanding phase so understanding the use case itself then the setup so there, there are different setup needed for each of these applications then you configure those applications based on the need of this scenario and at the end we configure and deploy the integration flow which we have created and then verify it so i will jump right into the uh, understanding phase because here it's about as we all know it's sap integration suite so we get familiar with it we get familiar with sap s4 hana and then understanding of the business scenario okay So this diagram is the same one I was sharing earlier. I will go further and I will show you the integration flow diagram now. So this diagram is then gets converted into the integration flow. And this is the diagram for the integration flow. Again, you have on the left side, SAP S4 HANA. In the middle, you have cloud integration of integration suite. And on the right, you have Salesforce. In the integration, what we are doing, we are on a regular basis, querying the business partner data from SAP S4 HANA. And as a result of the query, we receive the results from SAP S4 HANA. And then we validate if we have records to integrate with Salesforce. If there are no records to be integrated with Salesforce, the process ends here. Once we identify that there are records which needs to be sent to Salesforce, we capture them we split them and for each record which we receive from SAP S4 HANA, we need to transform them because both of the systems are, uh, they have a different structure of course. So once we get it, we need to use, we are using a mapping. For those who are familiar with uh, cloud integration, they know <laughs> message mapping quite well. So we are using a message mapping here where we transform the data which we got from SAP S4 HANA in the format which Salesforce is accepting. To be more specific, in the account object. We transform it, we filter it based on our needs, and then we push it to Salesforce. And that's where the integration ends. This gives you the overall picture about the architecture diagram and the integration diagram as well. Let's go next. Now comes the setup part. So here you have a link, how you set up the S4 HANA itself. This is about setup of the tenant. I will walk you through about the further step, what we need to do in S4 HANA to realize this mission scenario. Here again, you have a trial tenant account. You can create SAP integration suite trial account. I have a tutorial link here. And then you can also set up a Salesforce tenant. Once you have the tenants ready, now comes the part of the configuration. Let's go each and every step of this one. Yes, so here we configure the SAP S4 HANA. So to talk to SAP S4 HANA, we need, first of all, a technical communication user. So this guide, step-by-step -step guide, gives you the steps which needed to be done in SAP S4 HANA to create a technical communication user. Once you are done with creating the technical user, we need to activate the SAP Gateway. Again, you have the step-by-step -step guide for that. Once we are done with this task, then we have to activate the OData API. I will talk more about OData API and how we are using it. But we, when we activate the OData API, 
now we are enabling the business partner data to come to cloud integration via the SAP gateway. And that's what I was referring earlier. In SAP S4HANA, we get the data via SAP Gateway. So these are the three steps of configuration we have to do in SAP S4HANA so that the data can be captured via the old data protocol. Let's go next, configure Salesforce. So what we did so far, we configured SAP S4HANA so that we can get data from there. Now, to make a connection between SAP Cloud Integration and Salesforce, we need to enable Salesforce OAuth credentials. And to do that, here are step-by-step -step guide which you can perform in Salesforce itself to capture the credentials. So an example, we need a login URL, we need a client ID, client secret, and token. So these are the steps we need and you, you can perform it to capture those information. I can guide you in the further process how, how we are using the, the credentials we are creating in these steps. Okay. Now here comes the fun part, SAP S4 HANA reference to Salesforce. Uh, let me give you the background of it. We created the credentials in S4 HANA. We created the credentials in Salesforce, which we are going to use in SAP Cloud integration. But once the data starts flowing in from, from system SAP S4 HANA to Salesforce, we want some correlation ID between them. Because how will you know that certain business partner in SAP S4 HANA, which, was, which one it belongs to in Salesforce. So in Salesforce, you have the object as account. In, in S4HANA, you have an object as business partner. So what we are doing here, we are creating a custom field in Salesforce under an object account. And while doing the integration, we are putting the business partner number in Salesforce. So then it creates a reference for us. We can go back and we, whenever we see a record in Salesforce, we can already identify which business partner it belongs to from SAP site. And that's the beauty of the reference here. And to do that, uh, we need to perform these activities. So we go to the Salesforce, we do a, we go to the setup screen, we go to the accounts, we choose the field, and then we, an example you have, you see here a suggested name. So we re named it SAP reference partner number. And then we enable the checkbox external ID. And this is what we are going to use in our integration flow. Once we are done with the reference configuration part, we do the security material. So um, for the people who are familiar with cloud integration, uh, we need to create security material and the materials are nothing but uh, the credentials which we are we have created so far so we have created credential for s4 hana we have created credential for salesforce now we are going to add them in sap cloud integration so these are the steps it gives you step by step guide how you can add them in sap cloud integration and these are the information we are going to use in our integration flow. Like an example, in this one, you see we are trying to use uh, token service URL. We are using client ID and client secret. So those are the information we have to add in the SAP uh, monitoring tab so that they can be accessed in the integration flow. Once we are done with that, we will go to the integration flow itself. This part I have already explained you previously, so I will go further. Um, so integration flow, it's, uh, this integration flow replicate account from SAP S4HANA to Salesforce is available in the package called SAP S4HANA integration with Salesforce. Inside this package, we will see um, more than just this particular flow. I will show you in a real example as well. 
how does it look? But once we go to the integration flow, we can configure it based on our need. So if I if I'm the end user, I want to run this integration every day or every hour. I can do that. I can set the timer based on my need. Then I can select the receiver system. So I, in this case, there are two systems, S4 HANA and Salesforce. So we select S4 HANA. We mention the details and the connection details of S4 HANA. In this case, we also are using credential name as you see here. This is accessing from the security material. Same thing we have to do for Salesforce as a receiver. So we select the Salesforce. We provide the credential details, whatever we have put in the security material. After that, we can add some parameters, activate, in other words, some parameters to log more information. So if I want, whenever the integration is running and I want to log the body, I want to log the header or property, I can just switch on these parameters via these fields, and then they start logging in in the flow itself. The initial date comes in the picture when you want to run it for the first time. How, how far back you want to go in your query while you are querying the SAP uh, business partner detail from S S4 HANA. So you want to query data which are available since an example in this case, 1970. And then from that time till now, it will get all the data from there. And from the subsequent run, it will remember when it ran and it will only get the Delta data. It will not get all the data every time. That's not uh, uh, a good performance for our system. Once we configure it, the time comes for our verification. So once you configure, you deploy the integration flow, we follow these steps to see the logging of the integration which is running. So these are steps which we can do. Uh, let me show you the integration package and integration flow itself. Yeah. So the integration flow I was talking about is available under SAP S4 HANA integration with Salesforce package. And in here, you see a lot more than just account. Um, you see iFlow related to replicate sales order, sales contract. Uh, we see some iFlow related to product master data. And for each of the steps I provided, it's also available in the documentation guide here. When we go to the artifacts, these are the iFlows, which can be configured based on our need. And today we are talking about replicate account from SAP S4 HANA to Salesforce. Let's go to this particular one. And this is the real flow. This is the real iFlow which can be used and configured based on the need. Let me start with this. So as you can see, this is the timer. We configure it based on whatever the configuration is required from my business side. If I want to run it daily, hourly, it's up to us. It sets some parameters, some properties in it. And afterwards, it makes a connection to SAP S4 HANA using OData protocol. And this is where the credential material we created is being used here. And obviously SAP S4 HANA on-prem, we are talking about S4 HANA on-prem. So it goes via cloud connector. And this is the cloud connector uh, location ID I'm using here. In the processing tab, you see, I'm trying to access the business partner. This is the query and the filter option. Once we get the data, we check whether there are records to be synchronized with Salesforce or not. And suppose we query today it runs successfully, but tomorrow the integration is running, but there is no data in SAP S4 HANA to integrate with. Then the integration stops here. The process will end. But if there are data to integrate with Salesforce, we continue 
we log some of the information, some of the steps. Then at the at this place, we split the information because here from here we are getting bunch of uh, business partner data. We split them. Now we are calling accounts because in Salesforce they are accounts. Um, here we are doing the mapping. So we are converting data which we are getting from S4 HANA to the acceptable data format which Salesforce is accepting for the object account. Once we convert it based on the Salesforce need, we make, and this is where we are using the Salesforce accelerator or adapter, we call it. In the connection tab, we see we are using the credentials. So these are the credentials we created earlier in Salesforce first, and then we use them in our security material. And then from here, we are accessing those security material. After the connection, it comes the processing part. So we are trying to do an upsert to Salesforce using the object account. And this is the SAP business partner reference number. We are trying to reference with so that whenever somebody is looking at the data in Salesforce, they can immediately recognize which SAP business partner data it belongs to. Um, this is where the process ends once we do it. Obviously, there are exceptions of process and handling. If there is a failure, what do we want with it? So we can switch on the exception sub, uh, sub process handling from the configuration part and start working with it. Let me come back here in the presentation. So, Sharik, did you want to yeah. go through some questions before you go on? Yeah. Uh, with your presentation. Sure. So it sure. seems like there's a number of questions in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, one from Guy: uh, Are all business partners being extracted at once, full extract? If not, um, and use Delta. How does it keep track of and make sure only changes are being extracted? There's okay. a, a very good question, Guy. So uh, what we are doing here is, let me go back here in the configuration and I will show you the example from this side. So when we were talking about configuring the iFlow, we were also talking about initial date. So when we run it for the first time, it will get all the business partner data which are available in S4 HANA. Yeah. So first run it gets all the data but while it is integrating data with salesforce it will remember when it ran for the first time and then it will save the date information in cloud integration and then it will reuse the the save date in the subsequent execution so in the next run it will only query the delta information rather than the whole sap s4 hana business partner list and that's what we are using um, the date. And if I show you from the integration perspective, we are capturing the date and then we are setting the date and then saving the date as well. And that's why you see uh, different shapes here, which remembers when it ran the last time. So from when we when it runs the next time, it will only query the data which has been created or updated since the last time the integration ran. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's one from Stefan. Uh, can the business partner changes also be captured via the events uh, instead of polling? Uh, for this particular integration flow, um, it will be via polling, but of course it gives you a starting point. And when you start working with it, you can manipulate it based on your need. So then if your SAP S4 HANA is allowing via AP, API gateway via events, you can use it. But for this integration flow, you have to edit it based on the need. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, maybe another one from Guy. If event-based, then something in S4 needs to trigger. Trigger it whenever a business partner is changed. What are the options? 
use an on publish body or as an S4 and call CPI uh, with a business partner number. Are there other options not required requiring a business partner specific body? So there are two ways. Um, because generally, when we're talking about the events, there, there's a whole new world altogether. Um, but if I stick to it, um, obviously, uh, we have seen customers who wants to uh, synchronize based on the events. So they get in the event, they get only the an example business partner. And then they query the whole data of that business partner in a separate call so that the event data doesn't get too heavy. Right, because when we are talking about the events, we want everything to run fast. It it should not stay in the event too long, and then sometimes you have uh, some limitation from event perspective as well. But again, then you have to edit your iFlow based on the need. Okay, let's just do one more, and then we'll go back to your presentation. Uh, one mm -hmm. from Mikhail: uh, Is this scenario delta or full replication? What is the performance if you have hundreds of thousands of uh, BP records? Uh, a very valid question. Um, so obviously we we should follow the SAP Cloud integration best practices. And that's where, and along with that, the timer. So if you know that when you are running an example once in a week, and you know that you are going to get hundreds and hundreds, <coughs> thousands of records, you want to run it more frequently. That means then your data, the, the Delta data doesn't get too much. You know, so we also have to take care of uh, consider the resources of cloud integration and the best practices, and we can manipulate the timer if it helps to um, minimize the the execution interval between them, and subsequently it will minimize the data you have available to integrate with. Okay, let's just uh, hold off on the other ones uh, till later. You want to go back to your presentation? Okay, cool. Okay, uh, that was the walkthrough part. Um, so I want to do a summary of uh, uh, what we discussed so far. Um, at the beginning, we talked about setup. So what we did in the setup, we set up the tenants, we set up, uh, we had some tutorial about S4HANA, we set up cloud integration suite, we set up Salesforce, and then we configured those applications. So an example in S4 HANA, we created technical communication user. Uh, we activated the SAP gateway and then also activated O data for uh, uh, business partner within the SAP gateway. Within Salesforce, what we did, uh, we created OAuth uh, credentials. We added a custom field in account object uh, so that SAP business partner reference number can be stored. And uh, in cloud integration, we created those security materials and added those credentials, which we got from S4 HANA and Salesforce. And in the deployment phase, we configured the integration flow. So we put all the, all the security materials we put in, we are using that. We put the date, so uh, for the first run, how how far back we want to go uh, to query data from SAP S4 HANA and uh, then deploy. Those are the steps we followed for setup, configure, and deploy. And now we see more than 20 companies have already started this mission. So, so this uh, mission looks quite popular. And now I would say jumpstart your SAP BTP journey today with SAP mission, which paved the way to, for a robust and uh, effective integration. Um, to this, I have this slide for questions. So um, please uh, feel free to ask questions. Also, um, stay in touch for more SAP missions in coming months. I hope uh, you can also request for any specific scenario you would like to see in the future missions. And uh, we as the Rojo team also can consider them uh, for our future releases. Uh, going back to Toro, if you see sure. any questions. Yeah, there's a few other questions. So there's one from uh, Marina. Um, her question is, does it have uh, does it have the new Salesforce adapter and do we need to download the adapter from Software Center for Salesforce? Yeah, 
So now we in the we are in the phase of having the Salesforce adapter automatically available in cloud integration. Um, so far, customers can easily download it from that launchpad. And uh, let me see if I can show you that part. But you can download it from that uh, as long as you have basic cloud integration license. You don't have to have any special license for it and you can download and use it. It comes with, an, uh, with a workbench, which helps you in the mapping document. Hope this answers your question. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's another one from Guy. Um, is there, if there is a daily delta and for some reason one day the iFlow does not run only the next day, uh, mm -hmm. Is it going to miss one day of the changes because it only looks at the changes within the day? Yeah, uh, a very valid question. So what we are doing here in terms of uh, the delta time, we are saving it after we got the data. So they are, there we are quite safe in that sense because if we miss, suppose uh, you have a maintenance of cloud integration uh, and the cloud integration, you are not doing anything that day. But after that day, if you run in the next day, it will remember only the date which was successful run the last time. So you are covered in that aspect. Okay. Another one from Marina. If it's uh, event-based, do we also need to use event mesh? Uh, that one is outside the scope of this particular mission scenario, but um... I, I can jump in as well, Sharik, if you want. John, yes, here. please, John. Yeah, so it depends, of course, it is event based. There's many ways you can configure it, huh? but if you have S4, for instance, on the other side, you use the standard events, which uh, you can configure, obviously. In that case, you don't need event uh, mesh, or, but Obviously, it depends on your choice. You could also include it in between, in which case you will have to send the sender. You will have to put a sender, you know, uh, you know, instead of uh, scheduling. Uh, yeah, the way it is now. I, I hope it's a bit clear. Yeah. Okay. I want to thank, uh, thanks, Roberto, for your, your comments along the way. You've been answering some of the questions as well. Thanks for that. Um, the next question, uh, Michelle, from Michelle, is it only possible to read the Salesforce data in S4 HANA or also uh, wrote data in S4 HANA and write them back to into Salesforce? Mm -hmm. Sorry, uh, okay. can yeah. I go as well? Yeah, please. please, please, please. In, in, in in this specific mission here, we have very specific flow eh, for most demanded, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, scenarios. But obviously with the adapter, you can use the adapter to build any flow you want, right? Uh, and then you can mix and match as you wish, because at the end of the day, it's an I-pass, right? You can orchestrate as you wish uh, with the adapter. Whereas these specific missions have been made to cover very specific scenarios that we have, you know, uh, got requests from customers. And just to add in that point, uh, in the same package, we have account update scenario, and there we are taking data from Salesforce. So we are getting querying data from Salesforce and putting it back to S4 HANA. So you have another iFlow, which might help you in this another use case or guide you how to start with. And there's another question from Michael. How does the queuing work when one of the systems is in maintenance mode or simply down? Um, in these flows that we have, uh, in these scenarios that we're presenting, there's no queuing. Huh? So uh, basically, uh, as you see the process, when it's starting in the beginning, we retrieve some data from S4, uh, let's say, right? So, and that there's no queuing involved in this specific case, right? Um, and uh, also in Salesforce, we push it. So maybe I did not understand the question well, but. Uh, oh, Michael, if you want to unmute your line and, and, uh, and cl uh, clarify your question. It's Michael G.
Okay. So okay. If, if if not, Michael, just um, maybe if you can put some clarification in the chat, that would be great. Uh, another one from Guy um, goes. Uh, By the way, I just noticed in the iFlow that it updates the timestamp of last run before Salesforce is being called, uh, which means that if the call to Salesforce crashes, it will lose those changes because next time it will continue from the new timestamp. Is I'm not sure if there's a question here, Guy. Can you clarify if there's a question or is it some clarification you want? Um, this guy here, I, I, actually it, it is a question. It, 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 am I correct? Uh, this is my interpretation if I look at the iFlow. Yeah, so maybe John here, I can jump what's happening is if in your error handling when there is a problem, you know, at that point, I mean, there's many ways one can handle it. Of course, in your error handling, you call decide to reset, uh, you know, you know, your next run to the <laughs> to the time at the beginning. But normally, if you say Salesforce crashing, that is a rare event, obviously. But in your error handling, you call reset it back to the previous mode, for instance, at the previous time. Mm -hmm. Well, there's no rollback or or. Or let's say you know, like yeah. mid after it was successful. It's so you, the way it is right now. You, you kind of have to have some manual process to. No, you can well, roll back. You cannot do because obviously, if you update something in Salesforce, it is updated unless you really make an operation to undo it. But there's no rollback. But I guess because it's you overwriting objects, right? In this particular case, yeah. in Salesforce. So if you set the time the last run time to the to the time that you had before running this flow, what you're basically effectively doing is to go back in time and reset again, the, you know, refetch the data. It yeah. makes sense. Or, or, or maybe, just, maybe just update the last run after the Salesforce call and only, yeah. only if that's successful, then As update. Well. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that's simple. That's, there's many ways to, to handle it, but I, of course, it depends on some requirements that we could go through as well, <laughs> you know. Oh. Okay, great. Thanks for that clarification, Guy, and for the answer, Jan, uh, John. Uh, John. Uh, maybe before we we uh, get to the other questions, uh, John and and Sharik, maybe if you guys want to type in your your email address in the in the chat, so that if people have questions after our call today, uh, they can reach out to you as well. Um, okay. There's there's one uh, question here from Jim. Um, will there be any difference in the license cost running uh, more real time uh, versus uh, polling data? Um, sorry, should I go? You want yeah. to go? Feel free, John. No, because uh, for first for the adapter, it's included in your license, so you don't have to pay extra for it. And if it, from S4, at least, if you use the normal standard events uh, with uh, CPI, there's no extra cost. But of course, if you introduce an event match in between, you have then cost for the event match. But, you know, so it really depends on how you combine it. But if you just have to, yeah, with, with these specific flows that we're showing you, there's no extra cost. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it seems like uh, Michael from earlier has given a clarification to his question. As to my question related to queuing, I Im Im I'm, I'm assuming that's imagine. I imagine there is also real-time replication, um, which requires a queue. How would that work, especially if I want to restart my queues? Mm. We will uh, still have to understand because if you say real time replication here, it will mean that in S4, you're letting S4 push the events to you. So it means that those queues will not be at least in the integration flow at this moment, right? And on the uh, Salesforce side, it's also not involving the queues. So, you know. It will be event sent to your integration flow and your flow pushing it. We have actually customers who have flows like that, right? So where we're accepting events and then pushing it further. But Sharik, you wanted maybe to add something? Or not? No, it's fine. John, you are all, you have already answered. So from Salesforce side, we are using um, REST um, 
protocol. Uh, so there is no queue involved in that uh, aspect from from source side. Obviously, in this particular scenario, we are using O data pulling approach. So we query the data. And John, you already answered about the queuing approach from S4. So that was so Michael, Michael G, if if uh, if uh, if the answer your question hasn't been answered, maybe if you want to unmute your line and and ask it, or if if it has, just let us know that we've answered your question. And Michael, you can also contact us by email. We just put our email IDs here. We can arrange a separate call if you wish and go a bit more in detail. It seems like the last question, at least in the chat for now, is uh, from Jan. Um, his the question is, how is this different to SAP Open Connectors? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the difference is Open Connector is obviously yeah, and that, you know it's it's next to the integration suite, but these adapters here are built in. In your integration directly in your uh, cloud integration okay so uh, for for these flows for these adapters you don't have to leave cloud integration you still remain in cloud integration so it's the same as if you will use the o data adapter or you know any of the other standard adapter and all the monitoring happens in integration uh, in a cloud integration as well okay so I don't see any any additional um, any additional uh, questions in the in the chat. If you guys have any additional questions, please do take this moment to um, ask your questions. If not, you can unmute your line and ask your question by audio. Okay, it doesn't seem like there's any additional questions. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sharik and, and, and John for uh, a great session. It looks like uh, a lot of a lot of questions and a lot of uh, um, queries from our from our uh, list, uh, participants. So definitely um, value add here tremendously. Um, just to let you guys know the recording for today's session will be uh, made available. Um, to you guys, we're uploading all of these all of these um, recordings to YouTube. Um, I'm actually the link that that I'm putting there. You can access it. You don't need any special invitation. It's not a, a the work zone site or a jam site that you need an invitation. Um, you can go there. All of the recordings that we've done so far uh, for the last five months uh, are there. If you want to re-listen to them, so to today's recording. It'll take us a, a day or two to upload it to, to YouTube, and then we'll make it available to you guys as well. Uh, again, thank, thank you to our, uh, to our uh, presenters today, I, and thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to, to join us. And again, apologies for the multiple emails that we sent out. Uh, it was all because of some technical difficulties we're trying to overcome with, with Zoom. Hopefully next week, things will run a little bit more, more smoothly. Please do join us again um, next month. Um, we our next session will be on July uh, the the fifth, I believe. If I'm not, I'm not mistaken, we have another great mission lined up for you guys today uh, at that time. Thank you again, and have a great morning, afternoon, or evening wherever you're located. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks for joining. Bye bye.